सो हेलो गाइज वेलकम टू इंजीनियर्स कोर्ट एंड इन द प्रीवियस वीडियोज वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द कर्नल वॉट इज़ द कर्नल वाट आर द डिफरेंट स्पेसिस इन कर्नल द यूजर स्पेस एंड द कर्नल स्पेस एंड सो डिफरेंट सो अबाउट देयर आर्किटेक्चर्स इन डेप्थ अबाउट द यू नो कर्नल स्टैक एंड द यूजर स्टैक हाउ दे आर मैनेज वॉट आर द डेटा स्ट्रक्चर्स दैट आर यूज इन द कर्नल एंड द टेबल्स दैट आर यूज यू नो वी हैव नॉट सीन द यूजेज ऑफ टेबल्स इन अ मोर इन डेप्थ वे but in the later videos we will see about that as well but that was a sort of introduction video to us now let's discuss some of the kernel architectures that are available to us you know so there are mainly five types of kernel architecture currently used that is the monolithic kernel the micro kernel the hybrid kernel the exo kernel and the nano kernel so in this video we will particularly see about these types of architecture see that their advantages and disadvantages and also the examples and see how these works and what are their benefits and you know what are the disadvantages so let's start with the monolithic kernel okay so the monolithic kernel is in this architecture all the core functions are you know in the large program in the kernel like everything most of the important things are in the kernel space only so in uh, the architecture is defined based on what are what are there in the kernel space and what are there in the user space and how are they you know abstracted what layers are there in each and every architecture so in monolithic kernel the process management you know the file management the important stuff the most important stuff like the memory management the interrupt handling and the device drivers are all bundled up in the kernel space and they interact with the uh, application and the user processes and the other operating system features which do not require you know the main uh, direct access to the hardware and you know the cpu are kept in the user space and they interact with the api or the system calls right all the features are available in the kernel space and the entire operating system runs in the uh, runs in a single program in the kernel mode you know the since all these things are in the kernel space itself so the overhead or the travel overhead and the communication part is uh, very fast because you know they do not uh, the system call overhead is less you know they do not need system calls to communicate through each other they can uh, they have their uh, the kernel they are all in the kernel space right so that is why the overhead is less so because of this you know the kernel space is uh, uh, generally a, has a very large size which you know which can lead to uh, various disadvantages like uh, uh, you know slower boot process or increased memory you know so let's see upon the advantages and disadvantage i hope you understood what is monolithic kernel right in in this everything is implemented in the kernel space and there is very less uh, thing available in the user space the application and the other non important operating system features are uh, you know they are in the user space so advantage is as i told you efficiency and performance because of the uh, because everything is in kernel space the uh, overhead is less and they, they are generally fast and the system calls are you know very efficient since they are you know in kernel space the resor resource sharing is very you know very fast and simplified because we do not need to interact uh, consist uh, constantly throughout the user space and kernel space right and since everything is in the kernel space the development and debugging is very simple as everything is in one module itself right in single single process uh not uh, sort of single process but everything is in kernel space only so you know development is kind of easy we do not uh, we do not have different modules for different different stuffs and all the uh, all the things are developed in a, in one program itself and what are the disadvantages so as uh, as the advantages states the uh, development is simplified but you know modularity is lacking here because these are not modular so which leads us to fa limited fault isolation it means that if there is a error you know it is hard to Uh, uh, it is hard to know like uh, and the overall kernel space is uh, bug uh, bugged right if uh, error persists in for example a particular process management uh, module or the file module you know and since these are all implemented in the kernel space therefore the the security is also limited because uh, it can easily be breached you know using the uh, using a single module itself and since these are directly independent to you know the drivers and the hardware and the core computing parts so the portability is reduced you know you cannot uh, you cannot port these kernels into an, uh, another hardware because these are all the drivers and you know all the 
like the file management module etc is defined in the kernel space itself so a uh, very famous example of the monolithic kernel that is currently being used also is the you know linux linux kernel is a very famous example of it uh, so yeah these this is about all in the monolithic kernel so next move on to the micro kernel so to overcome the disadvantages of monolithic kernel that is the lack of mod modularity you know and everything that is sort of there in the kernel uh, micro kernel was developed in the micro kernel you know it was more uh, it was developed so that it could be you know more more modular it could have been more modular and it can be you know uh, it can uh, it is independent of hardware and portable and it is very portable right so to overcome these uh, micro kernel architecture was introduced in which you know as you can see the file management and the device drivers uh, are there in the user space and not in the kernel space right and it is also developed to make the kernel a lot simplified and a lot less in size so only the important features like the process management the memory management the interrupts and the, all the kernel data structures are there in the kernel mode that is kernel mode that is why it is loosely coupled with the hardware and the you know devices like the and the, all the file management and device drivers are there in the user space so since these are independent of it so that is why it is portable because uh, you know obviously the file management and device drivers and the hardware part are in the user space so let's talk about the advantages so the obviously the modularity because you know modularity was uh, uh, the reason because micro kernel was invented or discovered Mic micro kernel architecture right so because of the because of the division or diversification between the kernel mode and the user mode and uh, you know uh, kernel mode was uh, is a uh, uh, the size of kernel mode is very less and uh, these are modular so it is very scalable and flexible you know you can add features to the kernel mode and user mode very easily uh, but in the monolithic kernel it was there that since everything is in a single code you know it is uh, if you want to add any new feature then it is very difficult it was very difficult in the monolithic kernel but in micro kernel it is very easy and obviously it is portable and you know hardware independent so let's talk about the disadvantages as the diversification was made there is there was a lot of performance overhead you know uh, a lot of system calls were made from the kernel mode to the user mode sorry the user mode to the kernel mode and uh, the file management and the device drivers constantly making uh, system calls to you know the process management the memory management part which which uh, which increased in the uh, perform which altered the performance you know and it is also dependent the kernel mode is sort of dependent on the user level services right and due to due to the uh, due to the more modular code the development uh, complexity increased in the micro kernel right so uh, basic example of micro kernel is the minix uh, minix operating system so i hope you uh, understood the differences between micro kernel and monolithic kernel in monolithic kernel again we are repeating that the everything was implemented in kernel space so that lead to led to lack of modularity and limit, uh, reduce portability to overcome these problems micro kernel was discovered in which you know the file uh, the file uh, the hardware part was shifted to the user space like the file management and device driver softwares so that uh, and the code was made more modular so that uh, we can uh, scale it and uh, make it more flexible and the examples are like the linux part and the uh, you know minix operating system so there were certain disadvantages of the micro kernel as well so to ov overcome these the hybrid kernel was was discovered so a very famous example of hybrid kernel is the mac os mac os as you know is very stable right so the hybrid kernel states that it you know it uh, it takes both the features of the monolithic kernel and micro kernel and uh, and uses both of them both of it the, it it takes the performance of the monolithic kernel and you know the modularity of the micro kernel and uh, implements it in its architecture right so as you can see uh, so th there are several abstraction layers in the hybrid kernel which you know which uh, which makes it more modular so we will discuss about the hardware abstraction layer in a moment
so in the user space as you can see the application and the user process the network the network part is shifted to the user space and the other operating system features are there and in kernel mode all the important features like the process management the memory management the interrupts the file management and the device driver set sets but the device drivers do not directly inter directly interact with the hardware but it interacts through the you know h what we call hal or ha hardware abstraction layer so hardware abstraction layer was made to you know uh, make the kernel hardware independent because all the features are coded in the hardware abstraction layer which uh, that is why it is more portable and there there are standard set of apis that are you know uh, preset in the hal which makes it portable like you can it is coded in the hal rather than the ha hardware right so you know and the uh, there are various performance optimization that can be focused in the hardware abstraction layer which are specific to the hardware right so this is all about the hi uh, hybrid kernel so what are the advantages of it obviously it is better than the micro kernel it is very scalable and secure because you know it uses both uh, uh, both of the micro kernel and monolithic kernel it is it uh, it has a better resource management and it is very fast because you know it uses the features of monolithic kernel it uh, it has all the component main important components in the kernel mode which reduces the performance overhead but there are certain disadvantages to it but these are not that important the like the coding part of this these types of kernel are very complex and you know requires a lot of knowledge actually requires knowledge of both the user mode and the kernel user uh, both the monolithic kernel and the micro kernel the developer should have a very fine knowledge of both of that architecture so uh, because these uh, these two uses uh, the hybrid kernel uses both the features of the monolithic and micro kernel the system stability is you know more prone to bug because uh, so it is uh, you know when the, when it is to be coded it requires a lot of attention and it, uh, the developer needs to be really careful about that uh, you know and obviously the uh, one more thing one point the hardware abstraction layer handles the hardware interrupts which basically abstracts and encapsulates all of the it all the hardware part into it and you know separates the kernel architecture from the hardware part which is its main advantage right so it is very portable and you know it is very fast as well so next move on to the exo kernel so exo kernel was developed by mit you know uh, exo kernel is basically a minimalistic kernel design no it is very minimalistic and it is used in embedded systems uh, sorry it is used in distributed systems which you know often require unique requirements and constraints which can be uh, fulfilled with uh, with the exo kernel exo kernel has you know you can customize abstractions in it so we will discuss in a bit so let's let's see what are the components that are there in the exo kernel in the user space and the kernel space it should be space yeah, okay so uh, rather the uh, the main motive of exo kernel is to you know make the kernel uh, kernel size less and rather uh, rather shift to the user space and uh, give the application and the user processes a direct control over the hardware but uh, you know direct control means not like they can directly interact with the hardware obviously there are abstraction layers but you know uh, the kernel is not required or it is required a little bit to interact with the hardware right so it maximizes the application level control uh, and obviously it is that is why it is used in the distributed system it also has a hardware abstraction layer and you know the uh, the user can uh, the or the application developers can customize their uh, customize their abstractions and it rather focuses on direct access to the uh, hardware and the core cpu part you know so the applications can be developed in their own way and because of it's uh, and it can develop it can be developed according to their own requirements right so this leads to better performance of applications and there are no unnecessary overheads and since the it is uh, using the abstraction layer that is why it is very portable and secure and the resource management part is also very uh, very good because the application directly interacts with the cpu and the resources all the resources available so you know it is according to the developers needs but the uh, with these there comes the disadvantages with that is they are very se uh, less secure and uh, because of the uh, because of their architecture nature you know uh, since the application has direct control over the hardware and the cpu so that is why if any uh, 
uh, any malware malware can you know access the access the hardware and the cpu of the system that is why it is very less secure and careful attention is ob- obviously careful attention is required while coding because it is very complex the application developer uh, the application developer should be very cautious about because it is directly accessing the resources of the uh, computer right and obviously the development complexity of the overall exokernel is you know increased and it is developed by mit so you know okay so next move on to the nano kernel so nano kernel is you know a very basic uh, basic type of kernel which is used for mainly development and research purposes right but it is also used in embedded systems uh, the exo kernel used are used in distributed system because they can be customized according to the application developer right but in nano kernel it is since uh, the embedded system that is we have talked about embedded systems right in the video one i guess in which they are used in for example rocket launching software is an embedded system and they do not require that complex architecture you know they uh, tend, the developer uh, it requires a more simpler kernel or the uh, a simpler operating system so all the features uh, and you know all the uh, all the features of it like the file management and application user process and the device drivers are in the user space and not in the kernel space we tend to make the kernel space more you know um, less in size and uh, uh, so that only the essential or the critical features are there in the kernel space and it obviously prioritizes resource efficiency by minimizing kernel size and reducing the resource requirement of the kernel right so the uh, the advantages are obviously they are they have a very minimalistic kernel size and very minimal minimal resource requirement they are very modular and very secure because in the kernel only the process management the memory management and the interrupts are there which are the critical parts of the operating system and the disadvantages is that like they are very basic and they do not offer you a lot of services they only offer some basic services that are required what do you want in the rocket launching part nothing like you do not want to run a browser right so obviously less complexity is required in the user sp- uh, 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 less complexity is required in the coding part but you know since it uh, it tends to make the kernel space simpler the user space becomes more complex and uh, more complexity is required to code it right? but overall the nano kernel is very simple uh, and very basic and you can you know you can develop your own nano kernel for educational purposes or for research purposes right because they do not tend to do a lot of work so these were the five types of kernel architecture there are other kernel architecture as well you can make your own kernel architecture and um, uh, based on your requirement but these are the main uh, these are the main architectures that are used in the market you know so okay in the next videos we will discuss about interrupts in a more in, in depth way and see how they how they work in the hardware level what are the signals that are received and we will you know see uh, we will also code it in c and uh, code it in the c programming language and see how uh, how it works and we will look into a bit of more of assembly language part and see how they stores what are the you know what are the commands and how cpu converts them we will look into it in depth so if this video was helpful please feel free to like and subscribe and if you have any doubt regarding any of the architecture please feel free to comment in in the comment section thank you guys for watching this video i hope you i hope you had a good day thank you